Welcome to the Empowered Podcast, episode 43. I can't think of anything clever to say about 43. All right, all right, here we go, episode number 43 of the Empowered Podcast. I'm your host, Ellery Wells, and today I want you to pay close attention because in this conversation with my guest, who by now you may already have guessed, it's Chris Cerrone of the fantastically popular, wildly successful Cerrone Show, but he and I talk about just kind of the process of of building something online, the idea of putting your heart and your soul and your your mind your skills into something only to you know maybe have it rejected or you know towards the end I even talk about a course which we now know that I did launch my course but we just peel back the curtain a little bit and talk about some of the thought processes of of really putting yourself out there and starting and starting something and I share with Chris some of my hesitation to start my course and we don't we don't talk about the course and why so don't get don't get too worried that it's going to be the focus of that but I really want to walk you through the journey that I took over the last couple months of should I do this or should I not do this is this something that I want to do or can I find a way for myself to to talk me out of this so it's there towards the end, but I wanted to give you a heads up to really pay attention to that one. I hope you enjoy this. This episode is probably my longest one. I think I was the longest episode on Chris's show, and he has you know, filled the, the spot of the longest show on mine. And it just goes to a testament to the kind of person that Chris is and the kind of relationship that, that podcasting allows two people a thousand miles away to build with one another. So without further delay, we'll go right into the episode. Stick around at the end. We'll give you some more info. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Empowered Podcast. I'm so excited to be able to share my conversation with the Chris Cerrone of the Cerrone Show today. Chris, how are you doing? I am doing so fantastic that I now have the 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 in the beginning of my name. I'm just so ex- excited. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. The Chris I don't know if there's other Chris Cerrones out there, but no. you're the in my opinion. Thank you. So we were just chatting before we started recording about all the cool stuff that you're up to, what Las Vegas is like. Tell me, do you, is the show Las Vegas like Las Vegas from your perspective? Uh, yeah. Have you ever watched? The yes, show yes, Las yes, Vegas? yeah. With um, I forget the guy, the main guy's name. He was on Transformers too, right? Like the main guy. I honestly, I've never seen the show, but I know it, I because I asked that question because the show Dallas and all these Texas based shows are not at all like what Texas <laughs> is. So, I mean, we don't ride horses everywhere and wear yeah. cowboy hats. So I'm kind of wondering if your show is like your town. It, it is uh, <laughs> hyper focused on the strip, though, which is OK. Right. People generally only care about the casinos and the strip and, and all that, which I am totally okay with because you guys, and when I say you guys, just everyone who doesn't live here, you come here and you you spend your kid's college tuition, you leave, <laughs> and all the money from that goes to our schools, our roads, our everything. So thank you. <laughs> well, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> when we were there for a new media expo, I think Ashley might have spent $5 on – on slots. I didn't do any gambling, but on our very last day there, we were just walking around the Rio waiting to be picked up by our taxi. And there were people dropping like five or $600 at the craps table. Easy. Uh, there's people spending 5,000, 10,000, hundred thousand per hand in, in yeah, some of I these say, tables. It's crazy. I, I'm the type where I look, I'm not, I'm not opposed to gambling, but I want something where it's not, not purely luck or, happenstance that you win i'm more of uh i don't do poker because i I can't figure out like you know i have a three percent likelihood of getting a whatever i I like uh i like blackjack but i don't play a lot i do like a five or ten dollar but i equate you know if i'm going to spend ten dollars that's like me going to a movie if i'm going to spend fifty dollars that's like a video game i equate the amount that i could potentially lose to something else out outside of the casino man but i'd rather 
blow it in 30 seconds on this hand, or maybe I'll buy a video game I can play for a few hours. You are literally like the 0.35% of the world that thinks like that. And might I add, you are a genius for thinking like that. When, when my wife and I gamble, which, by the way, is like four times a year, three of which is when people or family are in town, right? We, <laughs> we go out, and we have a set amount that we spend, but our view on it is it's entertainment money. You know what I mean? Like we're not in it to win yeah. money back or anything like like this is our entertainment for the night. And if we could have, say, a hundred bucks, right? Which, for a lot of big time gamblers, that's nothing. A hundred dollars to us, I could make that last at the craps table, for I've done it for at least four hours in the past. Wow. Yeah. So when you think about it, it's entertaining. You're having fun. You're vibing with everybody. A hundred dollars for four hours, which by the way, you get free drinks. If you're a smoker, you get free cigarettes. Um, if you're gambling good, you can get free food. Like when you take all that in con into consideration, huh. it's actually a, a cheap night out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> See, I would, uh, when we were at the Rio, we went and we sat, uh, we went to the one of those fancy restaurants and we, we got to sit at the bar right by where the chefs were cooking the food. And it was probably about a hundred bucks. And that to me would have been more fun because it was me and my wife, and we were talking, and we got to talk to some of the chefs as they were like doing the lobster and making the bisque and everything right there in front of us, and that was cool. I would rather spend hundred bucks on that than in a crowded group of people because I uh, I tend to be introverted enough you, to where I like it. Quiet. Do you know how to play craps? Not at well. I, no, so just throw the, the next throw the dice, and I'm gonna put it on 17 red or something. No, 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 no. You, is that the wrong one? You're thinking of roulette, I think. When you come back to Vegas, I'm assuming, uh, and this is just assuming they're gonna have another badass pod or uh, uh, conference here in town, whether it's New Media Expo or something. And also assuming you're gonna attend, I am going to play craps with you. I'm gonna teach you craps, and here's why. One. <laughs> Craps has the best odds in the house, bar none. Really? It beats out blackjack. It beats out everything. And everyone loves roulette, by the way, that has the worst odds in the house. But not only does craps have the best odds, it's the closest, and this is a stretch, right? I, this is a real big stretch on my part, making this analogy. It's the closest to going to a conference as you can at a table game because, and you said it, you are in a crowd of people and you're kind of forced to talk to these people and get out of your comfort zone. And everyone usually at the table, uh, they're in good spirits, right? And you meet new people. It's just so much fun. So if anything on the record, make me that promise. If we can make that happen, <laughs> uh, I'll even give you $20 to play because I, I as much of a non gambler as I am, I love crafts and I think you'll be, awesome. you'll enjoy it. Awesome. Well, Chris, thanks for, for the offer. And I do plan on going uh, to the next NMX or it seems like every conference um, happens in, in Vegas. I, I liked the town. Uh, I thought I see the glitz and the glamour, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I think I'd probably get tired of, uh, you know, being there for more than just two or three days. How close to the strip, if you will, I guess that's the same thing as I'm sure there's another downtown, but how close to that do you live? I uh, probably I can make it to like the heart of the strip, it, probably like in between Trop and Flamingo, in about ten minutes, maybe. Cool. But and, and first of all, let me just take. I know we're going to talk about podcasting, and and this is the <laughs> de develop, grow, overcome, and all that. But I want to thank you for talking to me about Las Vegas because this is my hometown. This is where I'm born and raised, and I am so proud of my town. However, um, a lot of people, like, they, they only see Vegas as the Strip. And if you're only viewing it as the Strip, of course you're going to get burnt out. There's an old saying, like, where I think it's with Brooklyn, that they eat their own children. Vegas is so, <laughs> the Strip, Vegas is so... I don't know what, that we don't even bother to have children, right? Like, this town will <laughs> eat you up and spit you out more so than a New York City, than a Chicago, than an L.A., right? Like, Vegas is the, the sleeper when it comes to that. Now, with that said, there is a, a I was going to say beautiful lake, but it, it that that's debatable. Uh, 45 minutes from us, we have another uh, mountain range. 
uh, about an hour from us where there's snowboarding and skiing. We have Red Rock. There's so many outdoor activities, not to mention gorgeous parts of Las Vegas. As a local, I, I try to stay away from the, the strip like a plague. You know, it does seem like every single part of Vegas is designed from the ground up or from the sand up. You could maybe say <laughs> that it's designed to take people's money. It is. And they do a very good job at it. Uh, it they do. But what I liked and this is this is just me being honest here. I liked for the most part Vegas except for the strip because the airport was not an hour and a half away. Mm -hmm. It was a fairly short, I think it was like 10 to 12 minutes. Yep. Um, the traffic, other than, again, other than the strip, was fairly easy to uh, to navigate. I saw, you know, you could do helicopter rides to to see, I don't know if the Grand Canyon is close. To, there was something, maybe it was a, the Hoover Dam, is that the one that all the, so, what's, so, what do you take helicopter rides so to? So both, there's a, a Hoover Dam okay. tour. Uh, and then there's a like Grand Canyon tour that you can take like three or 400 bucks, right? Yeah. You could depart from the strip and then they have like the normal fly over the strip or fly over downtown helicopter rides. But yeah, you're right. It's that's, that, that's cool to me. I would much rather do that. Uh, we walked through a dozen hotels and you know, it, it, it was all right. It was fun being there with Ashley, my wife, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, for more than just two or three days, cause she's not a big gambler either but uh, anyway so chris what were you doing before you started this mega hit the sarone show you started this from what i heard about 90 days ago or so you were telling me before we started recording that you really got motivated from new media expo what were you doing before you became the chris sarone <laughs> host of the sarone show uh so right before i was in corporate america for about five years uh the last Posi Are you still doing that at all? No. The last position I held, uh, so the company was bought out in September 20th of last year. What is that? 2013, right? Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the last time I, I really did anything was September 20th of last year. My company was bought out. They laid us off. I kind of floundered what I was going to do. Um, went on a, a trip to Italy with my wife, came back turned down, I know I'm going kind of fast, uh, turned down a, a big life-changing position in New York uh, to do something on my own. And I had no idea what that thing was. I was listening to podcasts like crazy because I'm trying to stay inspired and motivated. And it's kind of like, you know, you surround yourself with people and, and you, now I can't think of what it is. Like you're the average of the five people you hang around with. Well, yep. I was trying yep. to do that by myself with podcasting because prior to corporate America, I, I've owned my own business, uh, brick and mortar. I had a cafe. Um, I was in real estate. I owned a, um, like a kid's mural painting thing. I mean, I've done so many different things in the past and I valued my position and my experience in corporate America for those five years that I wanted to marry the two. Right. I wanted to start my own thing. So I'm listening to all these podcasts and I'm getting inspired. And I'm like, why don't I just start a podcast? Like, why the heck not? I have savings. I got severance money. So I have a buffer. Right. Why don't I take the chance now and try to create a podcast that I would want to hear selfishly and then figure out later, how am I going to make money? How am I going to make it work? Because based on my experience in life, not that I'm that old, but when you put forth effort into something you believe in and you make a great product, then organically, and you're passionate about it, by the way, something that you could talk about every day for the next year straight without losing you know, focus, when you do something like that, then the organic effects of money and for like, let's just say famous YouTubers, like they, they chase after fame because they're entertainers, like all that stuff organically comes. And that's the mindset I took. And that's almost exactly what happened up to this point. So are you making money from the podcast I, at this point? I am. Yeah. I mean, okay, well, I'm not like John Lee Dumas money or, or some of these other or people <laughs> that are just making stupid. Nobody money. is. Yeah. Um, well, real quick, I'll, I'll tell you about my money here in a second, but let me just yep. say something about John. 
a lot of people look at John and they're like, that's crazy. I get inspired and I do it. But then there's another camp that says, well, that's a rarity. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. But at the same time, I now have John pegged as someone I want to take down. Like, I want to beat John Dumas. And I say that with the utmost respect because John and I know each other. Uh, super nice guy. In fact, if it wasn't for John, this podcast that I have may not exist. However, in that friendly, competitive nature, at least that I have, uh, John set the bar for me to go take down. You know what I mean? And to your point, everything was rare before it was common. Yeah, I- I- exactly. So he, well, basically and- what he did was he opened the door to people like me that says, you know what? You could make a couple hundred grand a month in podcasting and not be an Adam Carolla or or some mega celebrity who already had like a massive fo- or Joe Rogan, right? Who had a, a mega following prior. Like he basically opened the door for people who maybe not have had an online presence or didn't do anything before. And they're coming into this space and they have their dream and they put out a good product, by the way, and they work hard and they can make a couple grand a month so so what you've mentioned a couple times product you mentioned it uh well i don't remember what what you said just a couple minutes ago and then you just said it again would you say you have a product and if you would what is what is that product so i to me my podcast is my product right oh so you're selling like like john does or or I don't know if his message is still the same, but you're selling um, ad space for lack of a better term. No, 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 no. So, okay. Podcasting, YouTube, blogging, all that. I get it. They're platforms. They're tools, right? They're tools to have your message be heard across whatever platform you're, you're in. And the result of that is you can drive people either to your AdSense, to something you actually built, whether it be offline or, or online, But at the same time, I refer to them as products also. Like I see my show as a product for consumers. That show is free. You can listen to me every Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, I don't even know my own schedule. You can listen to me every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and it's free. But in my eyes, that is still a product. And I look at that because when I'm creating something, and this could be because I come from the offline mentality, right? Like I wasn't this big internet marketer before, so I see it as a product. And as long as my product is as great as I could make it so that people enjoy it, they're inspired, they laugh, they cry, whatever it is, then I've done my job. Now, the the part two to that, though, which I think you're, you're, you were asking or were trying to get at is the monetization of that. Well, the, the part two is creating literally an, a, a product as well. Um, and that could be Podcaster's Paradise for John. It could be Solo Lab for Michael O'Neill. It could be, you know, I can just go down the list of all these people who actually created something and then use those platforms to drive traffic and ultimately make money. So what is, I'm looking at your resources page right now and you've got, some, you know, fairly standard ones, you know, WordPress, you know, Genesis, Bluehost. Mm-hmm. Um, so where, and then where I am I like, making my money, basically? <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah, let, let's go there. Because what, one of the things that I want to do is is really help people uh, take back some control over their life. I, I, I fully believe that if, if you are just working for someone or for one company, all of your eggs are in one basket. And if you change jobs or get a promotion, you're just moving those same eggs to maybe a bigger, fancier, nicer basket. And I want to help people do what you and I are doing, leaving our jobs, taking back the control over our family's future. And if it's starting something on the side, great. Or if it's going full time, that's to me, that's even better. Walk us through this this process because you have the affiliate links. Um, I don't see, unless I'm missing it, I don't see a product that you've created yet. I'm sure that's in the works, but what are you doing to make money today? And somebody can replicate that on, on their end. Yeah. So when I originally started, uh, I mentioned just a bit ago, 
I, I was focused on making the best show possible and I would worry about making money later. I was only able to do that, however, because I had a nice foundation to go off of, which, quick side note, it, it is the utmost importance if you're going to start something that you have that foundation, unless you're something could, you know, pull in five, 10, 15, 20 grand immediately. Like you have to have a foundation because the, the mental state in which you're in when you're creating X, Y, Z is so much different when it's not money motivated. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I have my foundation, I am able to, kind of take my time and see what direction I want to go. Uh, I, I'm able to try things on the show. Like I've done a lot of different things on my show. Um, I, I, I've changed. I don't want to say I changed the format, but the show's evolving, right? If I was money motivated and I started to make money on my show, I would be deathly afraid of changing anything because I didn't want to lose that stream of income. Now, with that said, um, I'm still, to, keep in mind, you said it, I'm only 90 something days into it, into this, right? Uh, I'm still figuring out what my quote unquote thing is. I had, what was it? Audible, uh, as an affiliate, I guess mm -hmm. you could say they're sponsoring the show. Um, it's like, I don't even remember 15, 20 bucks a pop, whatever it is. Right. Um, that it's, it's all right. Like it's, it'll pay maybe one bill. And when I say one bill, I'm not talking about a car <laughs> or anything like that. You know, maybe yeah. not even because I'm in Vegas, maybe not even my power bill. Cause we were in the AC at like 68 degrees year round. Um, it's not paying anything that, but I tried it. Amazon affiliates. I think it was Joey Kasimi's interview when we somehow talked about, I think it was his, we somehow talked about DeWalt drills, right? Well, I, I put <laughs> okay. I put an Amazon affiliate link for DeWalt Drills in his show notes. Um, people could go in his show notes. They see, oh, yeah, they talked about DeWalt Drills. Let me click on it. It takes them to Amazon. They make money. Again, very small, like, dollars, you know, N nothing to write home about. Um, but really secretively, and I haven't really talked about this on my show or really in any other interview, but I'll, I'll give you the exclusive, I guess, is... I hope that's okay. I, I don't want. I don't want to ask you questions you're not comfortable. No, 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 against. no. I just. I never promote. I, what I'm about to tell you, I've never really promoted. Not because I'm secretive. It's just because I kind of tripped on this, and I haven't had the time to really, uh, or the platform to really discuss it. So I'm glad we're we're talking about money here. Is I was able to bring on uh, a, a couple of people that I consult, and from that, what, a couple are individuals and a couple are actual companies. Um, from that, a, a a nice fat chunk of money came in. That's when I was able to pay, uh, you know, my bills comfortably. What I've learned, however, is I may scale out of that completely. It's 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 not for me. The people that I consult now, I will always consult if they want, if they continue to pay me. But I'm not going to bring on anybody new, because when I go back to what do I want for my family, for my life the direction of my show, all that stuff. What do I want? Right. I want to be able to operate freely when you and I were talking about podcast movement. I want to be able to just jet down a podcast movement. I want to be able to jet up to Denver next week. I think it's next week to Greg Hickman's event. I want to be able to just almost be like that samurai that wanders the earth and, and reports to no one except for my wife and kids, of course. Um, but what I found with the consulting thing is it takes up a lot of time, at least for me, you know what I mean? Like I have these set yeah. calls weekly that are generally in an hour, but because I'm such a, a, a codependent and I'm so like, like I want to help these people that hour turns into an hour and a half, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not just working for myself anymore. I'm working for them. Is, yeah. It's consulting and even one-on-one -on -one coaching and that's how that, i guess that's why coaching can get so so expensive uh is because it's a time for money type thing and it doesn't scale you could do group coaching uh and that's one or, or courses like uh podcasting a to z yep. or uh jeff brown's got a good one and um i love jeff yeah you know, <laughs> he on the first, he's the only he's the first person to come back on my show twice. I haven't aired his second episode yet, but at the very end of his first one, he goes, 
Welcome to Movie Phone. It's hilarious. Oh, I love that. Do they still have that? Do you remember uh, Movie Phone? Uh, I do. I do. I I think I think they might still have a website. I just end up going to like Fandango yeah. or something else on my phone cuz uh, re- reviews are so so subjective and I mean, even Titanic, like one of the best selling movies, got like a seventy or something. Yeah. So how can you anyway, that's real real quick and then nonsense. I swear I'll get back to the topic I had. <laughs> I had the lady who put on Titanic on my show. She was an MGM studio executive. Um wow. and, and she was responsible for Titanic and Legally Blonde and Con Air and probably a list of a hundred different titles that we all know and love and that are like major movies. She was telling me, and I think we talked about this on her show that they were kind of all standing around saying, what kind of crap is this? Like, it's going to bomb. What are we even doing? Blah, 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 blah. Little did they know it turned out to be Titanic. Um, So that's interesting how the movie industry works. Now, going back to topic, uh, (laughs) I I recently, so I'm doing a lot of speaking engagements as well, and I recently spoke to a, a, a pretty dang large crowd, and a woman came up to me after and said, um, you know, how, how could I hire you to help me with my business? Cause I have a background in this, by the way, I'm not just willy nilly saying, Oh, I can help you with your business. Like not only did I have firsthand experience doing it, but that's what I did at my previous job in, in a corporate setting, which taught me a lot. But so she came up to me and asked to hire me out. And I was already at that point where I can't take on any, any new people. So I threw out a number that I thought was so crazy high that it would have been easier for her to tell me, no, that's too much than for me to say, no, I'm sorry. Uh, and she goes, yeah, that's fine. And I go, what the heck? Like <laughs> really? <laughs> nice. And, but then I, I, I didn't charge her. We, we didn't work it out. What I ended up doing was connecting her with somebody else that I knew, uh, that could, you know, really, help her out and give her the time and effort that, that she deserves. And, uh, it it worked out, but it got me thinking like there, there's so much opportunity and money to be made in podcasting that people are not thinking of. They automatically think a think they automatically think, um, AdSense or affiliates or sponsorships or any of those ways. But there's so many, like just creative, creative ways that you can make money. I don't care if you have an entrepreneur podcast, podcast about beer, podcast about yarn, podcast about transformer. Like it doesn't matter what it is, right? Football, baseball, it doesn't matter what it is. You could find a way to make money at it if you're creative enough. What some people might listen to this episode or go check your show or maybe find your show and come in and listen to this episode on on this. And they're like, well, sure, it's easy for Chris to you know have this uber successful i've used the word uber a couple times and i think it's because i've been talking to my friend rafael perez who does (laughs) something uber good anyway uh (laughs) anyway we'll we'll go we'll keep going with uber but it's it's easy for chris he's got this cool personality he's comfortable behind the microphone you know he's comfortable speaking he's got this just big you know caricature um what did you do before you launched the podcast and is it, was it an easy segue or was it like, man, I've got to really improve my speaking skills or my articulation. What did you be- do before? And all, you know, how did it get you all here? of it? And it's still not easy. I'll give you an example. I'll, I'll go into detail, but I'll give you an example of what I did for this interview. Uh, thanks for having me on, by the way, this is fun, man. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, right. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I feel like, you, you're expecting it to suck. No, 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 not at all. I'm just <laughs> extremely grateful for every show I'm, I'm always on. However, when, <laughs> when topics come up that I like really like talking about, then I, I remember that. But anyway, right before I got on here, I spent 10 minutes with my headphones on with like the loudest music I can find that I like, right? Um, to like really like just get me going and fire it up. It's we're, we're doing this because of, of how packed both our schedules are normally. And we wanted to get this done. We're doing it on a Sunday. Sunday for me is normally like relaxed time with the family and all that. So I needed to get in that mode. However, 
you mentioned being articulate, um, being this this grandiose figure, person, whatever, like public speaking, whatnot. I'm still scared to this day of all of it. I, I spoke in Kansas City. Uh, it's been a couple weeks now on stage with a room full of like 500 plus people with the two jumbotron things uh, on each side, like legit stuff. I've never done anything like that before, by the way. My leg was shaking so bad when I was up there. My right leg was shaking so bad up there that as I'm talking, and the talk, by the way, was very brief. It wasn't like I wasn't keynoting or anything. I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea. Like It was a very quick thing. But as I'm speaking, my leg is shaking so bad, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I hope people don't see this. Like, I hope they don't see my my pants, like, wiggling because it would have just looked weird. <laughs> and that's how scared I was. But there's been way too many times in my life that I haven't done things because I was scared. And only I, I just – I don't know, what, like, why or what. I couldn't find the motivation. That, like, whatever. In every single one of those times, I've always kicked myself in the butt so bad. I, everyone makes fun of me for using the analogies, and I'm going to use one on your show because why not? It's almost like you've been dying to ask out the most beautiful girl in school on a date. Like you had a thing for her. Maybe you guys flirted in school during a class. Like not only are you absolutely enthralled and in love with this person, you get the vibe that they feel the same way about you. What happens a lot is you don't get the you know what's to ask this girl out on a simple date. You don't ask her out. Time goes by. What happens? She, someone else who she may not like as much, rough around the e edges, maybe not as snappy as dresser as you, whatever. He's got the you know what's to just go right up to her and say, hey, what are you doing on Friday night? Let's go out. She goes out with him. Then you have that feeling in the pit of your stomach saying, I screwed up. Like the girl of my dreams is now with this DB over here because of, you know, whatever. And then you start you start trash talking this dude. But in reality, you didn't have the you know what's to to go ask her out in the first place. And I tell that story because that's the feeling I had so many times in my life when I wanted to start a business, get online, do this, do that, and the other. Podcasting in 2008, I went to my wife. I said, I want to start a podcast. And we did not have money, by the way, at that time. Like We, went, we may have had like 50 bucks in our account at the time. I went to my wife and I said, I want to start a podcast. There's 10 things I got to do. Nine of them are free. One of them, I need to basically use the last of our money to to go buy. And that was like the the microphone, whatever. And back then, what I was going to buy was like the, the headset mic combo, like the customer service representative looking type thing. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And she said, cool. Do nine of those free things first. Then I'll allow you to go spend the last of our money on this microphone. So she's super supportive, but she knows me too well. I'm like, sweet. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. I didn't start a podcast until February 12th of this year. You know what, you know what I'm did, saying? Like, did, did you do the other nine things in 2008? I did none of them. I spent, I did absolutely none of them. I spent all that time researching and this has to be perfect. Oh and, man. I, I know all too well yeah. what you're talking about. And I, this time around, no income and, and my family's used to living uh, a certain lifestyle, no income anymore. I have two small children. I, we need insurance. My wife's been a stay at home mom, uh, shortly after my first son was born. I need to make a, a freaking income. I need to take all those fears, all that, the, the, those things in the pit of your stomach that's pre preventing you from doing something like, it's almost like my back's up against the wall, the fight or flight mentality. Like I needed to harness that to actually make something happen. And once I did that, once I launched the podcast, no, actually, take that back. Once I created a site, then a lead pages, then I started reaching out to people, then I bought a ticket to New Media X, but once I started making little steps, those little steps turned into bigger steps, and now it's just so easy. I mentioned how I went speaking, and my leg was shaking so bad. Well, maybe a year ago, two years ago, whatever, if I would have been asked to speak 
at an event like that, I probably would have made up some stupid excuse why I couldn't because of I was doing some other fantastic thing. And in reality, I was doing nothing. I was just so scared of doing it. You see what I'm saying? Once I started Mm -hmm. doing little things, then big things and then growing, it gets easier. Like you're still scared, but it gets easier. And now my show is 90 something days old. Last month I did 91,294 downloads. This month I'm trending way over that. I would never, I I would have never had this if I didn't get off my butt and, and go make it happen. And real quick, because I throw out those numbers and they're big. I understand that. Let's just pretend I had a hundred numbers, right? Uh, For the entire month. That's a hundred people essentially showing up to my house and listening to me speak for an hour. Like that is so amazing and powerful. And you know this feeling as well because you're a podcaster. Like I would never have gotten to experience the benefits of somebody listening to my show and writing me a nice email or tweet me out or sharing me on Facebook or interview me on their shows had I not just got off my butt and made it happen. Yeah. I was very long winded. I'm sorry. I hope that, no. <laughs> I hope, I hope that was good for you. So ask the girl out and start. Hmm. <laughs> don't, really? don't you love, I'm sure you do the same thing on your show. Someone will, will give a long explanation and just because you listen to it and you're not the one speaking, you can summarize it in like 30 seconds. I, I, do? I do that all the time. And that's why I use 58,000 analogies on every single show because sometimes they just want to, dude, give me the quick answer. Give me the silver bullet. Okay, fine. Go up to that girl or guy if you're a female listening and ask and do and, something yeah, about and it. do something about it. <laughs> Quit sitting at the other end of the lunchroom and eyeballing them. That's not going to get you on a date to go see the new Iron Man or whatever, right? Like, I, I'm getting yeah. louder. I hope I'm not clipping the audio, but this is how fired up I, I am about this because I went through it. I understand what it feels like. The problem, and you and I chatted this chatted this up uh, before hit and record. New Media Expo. How many people did you and I meet there? Roughly 100, 200, maybe a lot, yeah. a lot, a- every yeah. single person. Oh, my God. No, here's how it starts. Hey, what's going on? What do you do? Oh, my gosh. I'm starting a podcast. I'm going to interview entrepreneurs or I'm going to do this and it's going to be so awesome. And we're launching in two months and blah, 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 blah. I was one of them, by the way. <laughs> how many of those people have launched their thing since January? Maybe out of the people that I met and talked to, maybe five that I can rattle off off the top of my head. Yeah, it's a small, relatively small percentage. But it's one thing I talk about. I I do some personal coaching, and I was talking to a girl um, in our last – last session, and so I think I think her issue echoes or mirrors a lot of the things what you talked about and what I've heard a lot before is like I want I want to get everything done right. I want to, or I want to, you know, get all my ducks in a row. And I did this, I used to do financial advising, you know, selling investments and things like that. And I wanted to have all of my licenses before I got my first client. What a mistake. Did you need them by the way? Um, to get a technically client? yes, but I wanted to have that? all of them instead of starting the first one and building on that one. <laughs> and I, I could have been meeting with people and I could have saved the paperwork until I had the licenses and then put it through to make money. Or I could have just been meeting the needs of people and just not – I keep – man, hitting that microphone. Um, and, and I keep uh, – I, I wanted to get all the licenses. I could have done it and built it and helped people earlier, and I didn't do very well. I mean it was in 2007, 2008, and the economy was tanking, but I still know my own – it was my own fault for wanting to get everything perfect before I took the first step. And so many people I think want to do that today. And it's the biggest mistake ever because you can't, you know, if we, if you and I started walking down this path, there will be obstacles. Like, let me just ask you, are there, have there been obstacles in the last two weeks? You've been at this for 90 days. Have there been obstacles in the last two weeks that you had not even come close to predicting when you started 90 days ago two weeks the, an obstacle came out this morning <laughs> like there's obstacles all the dang time and yeah for me being so new at it like i, I feel like i'm getting a, thrown a, a curveball every two seconds here uh the one this morning i booked an interview 
to somebody, which, by the way, I, I've had to reschedule two, three times because I'm learning my own schedule piece now, right? And my wife has something she has to do. I now I'm stuck with the kids. I now have to find a babysitter for just that one and a half hours so I can interview this person. When Meanwhile, this whole time, I'm like, I told the guy, I'm like, dude, Sunday, for sure, without a doubt, I promise. And I'm big on like promises and my name and all that. And then this pops up. Like I, I basically like beg, borrowed and steal to have a, a babysitter take my kids for a little while so I can do the, the interview. Yeah, I know. And you just, just stuff that comes along that you can't see when, when you first, when you first start out. So uh, I, I'm with you. I gr- agree. And I, I see it unfortunately a lot that people want it. They get inspired and that's great, but they want to have, they want to have their microphone and they want to yep. know their theme and they want to have the graphic and they want to have this, that, and the other already. And they don't, I, I was interviewed by a guy just a couple weeks ago. I won't mention his name cause he hasn't launched yet, but he was like, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And it's in the middle of May right now. And I don't, I don't think he's launched yet. You know how many of those I've done? And probably not just us, other other podcaster friends of ours that have done as well. They've gone on people's shows only to never hear it. Like that's freaking <laughs> yeah. crazy. You mentioned real quick. And, and re- hold on, let me t- let me like calm down for a second. Are we good on time? Because I feel like this is. I'm having a lot of fun, by the way, and, and we're touching on a lot of things that I'm passionate about. I just want to make sure I'm not like hijacking your entire show. And le- no, leave I'm, all this honestly- in, by the way. So people can hear this. I honestly, I I don't have anything (laughs) for several hours. I beat uh, Grand Theft Auto for the second time this week, so I'm not going back to that. So okay. So yeah, as long as you want to go, I want to make up this. I want to make this point real quick. You mentioned a a little while ago. um, People might say, "Oh, well, it's easy for him, and he can get up and speak, and blah 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 blah." Look, I didn't come from money. At all, right? Uh, at, at one point in my life, I was homeless. I was, um, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I'm, I, I don't have a college education, right? I can't, and you mentioned how, how I can articulate myself so well. I'm constantly, like, bashing myself for not being articulate enough. Like, I, I look at other people, and I say, man, I wish I can sound like them, and I wish I can do this, and... Oh, woe is me, blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I go through those struggles. But yet, I've launched something that is doing very, very, very well and is highly successful. And I'm seeing my face on, like, Life on Fire TV with Nick Unsworth, and I'm being mentioned over here, mentioned over there. All that, right? doesn't matter where you come from. I, I could probably go down the list of, of effed up stuff I've been in my life, been through in my life, and had to go through, right? So I, I could relate to a lot of people. However, who gives a freaking crap? I hope this is going to be an explicit show. I'm really trying to tame down my language, but like, who <laughs> gives? Stop. We've kept it clean so far. Like, stop looking at other people to, like, I don't even know. You know what I mean? Like, stop using mm-hmm. other people as an excuse for your success. Because what happens is, you're absolutely right. I need to get the perfect mic. I need to get the perfect logo. My website needs to be a certain way. You start interviewing people. And then what happens is you don't launch or you don't do because everything's not quote unquote perfect. And then some more time passes and it's still not launched. And it turns into, I'm waiting for this. It Then it turns into negativity. Then it turns into, well, shoot, John's so good because he did it this way. Chris's show has exploded because he's, very passionate or whatever the kid, then it turns into like, well, I can't do it because they, I'm not in their shoes. I'm not in their situation, which, which is such BS. And it pisses me off that people think that way. Myself included. I'm not taking myself out of the picture. I was one of those people. It, It just pisses me off because they don't realize the capabilities of their own selves. If they really wanted to start a podcast website, freaking car company it like they would go out and make it happen papa john's in 19 in like the 80s at a time when there's 
Pizza, pizza, Little Caesars, right? I, I think we're about the same age group. I'm in my mid thirties, so, so. Um, I'll be thirty one. Okay, year. so, Pizza, Pizza, Little Caesars, oh, yeah. right? Pizza Hut, Domino's, all these major, major, major conglomerate pizza brands. Then comes Papa John's out of the back of a bar, whatever city it is. I'm sorry, Papa John, I don't know, but. And he starts making pizza, and he evolves, and he grows, and he has such a passion for his pizza that now he's Papa John's. I can go anywhere in the United States and say Papa John's, and people will know what I'm saying. He didn't say, oh, well, I didn't start my pizza company in the heyday back when Domino's. You see what I'm saying? Like, take that story and apply it towards whatever your demographic is listening to your show for and get off your freaking butt and go make it happen. Yeah, and I— to. Keep going with pizza. Um, I'm getting hungry. Uh, I'm Italian. Domino's I have to their... throw that in there. Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and and Domino's with their rebranding. I mean, so many people are like, well, I've been going down this road, or I've had this career for 20 years, and they're not passionate about it about it anymore, or they want to do something else. And then you look at Domino's on the probably the brink of of just completely going under. And now, I don't know about you, Chris, but they're one of my favorite pizzas. I really love Domino's now. But they did its whole rebranding. They said, our pizza sucks. We're going to try to fix it. Now they have all these videos about you know being in their kitchen. They're creating their products. And they've gone from probably going out of business to yeah. extremely successful yet again. And it's just it's just one, that, one of those... One of those excuses, and I, I want to take a quick second to brag on a friend of mine Do it. who you will – you got to meet him in August when you go to podcast movies. It's a friend of mine, Johnny Lee Phillips. I don't know if you know him. His his podcast is Your Life Detective, and he is doing the exact opposite. Or he's, he's bucking the trend of what you and I are kind of – ranting about for a brief second or probably several minutes now. <laughs> but he launched his podcast because he knew if he didn't do it he never would and he's a handful of episodes in he's he's improved he's just taken all of these blows blows is has a negative term but he's taken all of this feedback all of this just you know all these obstacles and things he wants to do taking them in stride improving every step along the way and he and i talked about it he's like if i don't if i knew if i didn't do this i i would just not launch so i i got it out there when i wasn't ready and he he's doing it and it's again his name is uh johnny lee phillips and it's i think it's johnny lee phillips.com and his podcast is your life detective and it, i think he's maybe up to 10 episodes now but He's doing fantastic things, and he's acting in spite of his his fear, his, his self objection, and things like that. But you're you're so right. People, we we come up with all of these excuses, and I have excuses in my head right now. I'm I wanted to start a, a course, Chris, called "How to Turn Your Offline Expertise into an Online Business." I know I'm not the only person to do it, but I I have a unique perspective. But I was thinking just this morning. I can't launch it in the middle of summer because people are going to be out of town. I, I basically convinced myself as what I wait, was heck? waking up. I know, right? <laughs> it's like, well, summer's not a good time to launch because I was I'm wanting to kick it off like July one. I don't know when this this will even air, but um, we'll we'll see if it's after July one. And you're listening to this, you can come back and see if I've launched this this course. I think it will really help a lot of people because I've done stupid stuff for almost two years trying to figure all this out. You know, I've been I've been moving forward and doing research and and even as I say that I'm thinking some of those things are excuses. You know, oh I spent all this time researching and now I'm ready. Well, that's crap too. You know that. I mean, you just gotta you gotta put it out there and and see what dude see what happens. You, ha you have to because if you're not, I'm gonna steal it and do it myself. That is such a good no, really. That's such a good thank you. That's such a good thing to do. Oh my gosh. Like there's so many people out there's somebody probably listening to us that works in a cubicle somewhere who is extremely good at doing something in a cubicle. I don't know what it is, mm -hmm. right? What, like that person could buy your product and then teach people online how to do whatever this person does in, in his or her cubicle that makes yep. them so awesome. And for all we know, it gets them out of that cubicle. And like, oh my gosh, you have to create that. And it's tough. I get it. Like uh, 
we I don't remember if we were recording yet. We were talking about Jared Easley. Um, Jared Easley. First of all, I love Jared Easley. Let me give you a shout out, Jared. Star of the doubts. Uh, Jared Easley and I have been back and forth for it feels like for months and months on a on a couple idea ideas of of products that we're gonna do. Unfortunately, and now that you and I are having this discussion, I was going to say it's because of scheduling, but is it really scheduling? Are we just scared? I don't know, but um, we're trying to do something or, or somehow basically just work together, right, and create a product. And I bring this up because you, uh, in the beginning of the interview, asked me a question that I don't think I answered properly, or at least I'm missing this piece, and that's the monetization. I mentioned the sponsorships. I mentioned all this other stuff. But the the one thing that I'm working on, and maybe you and I can keep each other accountable going forward, I don't know, is I'm trying to figure out what my thing is, what my product is, whether that be mm -hmm. physical or online. And the problem that I'm at least having, which I'm being I, – I hired somebody I'm, I'm being coached through, is uh, – you know what? Can I use you in, as an example? Uh I want to say yes, but now I'm a little bit scared. No, 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 no. It's okay. I may, I <laughs> yeah, may talk yeah. a little crap, but I'm going to use you as an example. When, <laughs> okay, when you perfect. told me that, I felt like you were literally sitting on a gold mine and that you would pick up an axe to mine the gold and you're getting ready to swing down and you're like, oh, you know what? I'm going to use that shovel instead. So you put the axe down, you go pick up the shovel. Then you're like, all right, I'm going to start digging out this gold. And then you look around and you say, oh, my gosh, the... The, the the panning for gold whatever I'm gonna I'm gonna pick that up instead and before you know it you have like all these tools all over the ground that you you switched up now in our world that's Aweber that's Bluehost that's you know what I mean those are all those tools but mm -hmm. before you know it, all this time passes and you have not mined one bit of gold out of that that freaking mountain that you're sitting on. That's perfect. You see what I'm saying? That is so freaking perfect, Chris. And I, I use that analogy because I feel I have the opposite problem. And if someone's listening and you, and you think I'm an idiot or wrong, please reach out. Like, I need help, depending on when this airs. Uh, I feel like I own the whole dang warehouse of tools. I'm just out kind of looking for my strain of gold somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, of course, I can slap together some product and throw it out there and probably make great money. But what's currently out there by others majority is fluff and garbage. And that's not what I want to do. I want to charge you for a Honda civic and give you the new Lexus LS four thirty. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. uh, I, I used a couple of different, uh, references there, but that's <laughs> that, that, that gold mining thing is my favorite because a lot of other people, they had that same issue. They're sitting on, Basically, the Wild West in the 1800s for oil or gold. And they keep switching up their tools because they're getting shiny object syndrome. And see, I want to I want to help people. I was talking to a girl uh, about a month ago now. She had been laid off. She'd been in marketing for a few years. And she realized that her, her, like so many people, I, I've been – I've been incorporating this part into my my message. I've been li uh, laid off and fired. I've moved, you know, play, uh, moved towns for jobs. And what this girl discovered just a few months ago is what I discovered a long time ago is that if you're completely loyal to a company and sorry to all these corporate America types that might be listening to this, you're a number to that company. The larger the company is, the more likely you are to be just a number. I got I was let go from my job. And I have more accolades than anyone else in my department. That's and I was probably one of the highest awesome. paid people. And I, you know, they they showed me the door. And if you are, she learned in in January that her loyal, she was more loyal to the company than the company was loyal to her. Yeah. And I want to help people take that expertise that they have, whatever it is, and gain some of that freedom back not put all of their eggs in a single basket like I mentioned before, but also help the world with what they know. We've been so ingrained, Chris, or at least it, from my perspective, you you you're you're born, you go to school, you you get a uh, you know, you go from high school directly into college. You said you had a different path, but you go to school, you go to school, you go to school, you are told what to do, you know, 24 hours a day, and then you're expected to just go and you get a job. And what if there was another way? 
and I'm discovering and I want to help other people discover there is another way like what you're talking about through affiliates, through coaching, through consulting for these companies. You threw out a number so big you thought it was stupid and she said, OK. Yeah. I mean, pe people could be doing that all the time, but it's these fears that we have or it, you I think everyone has fear and probably always will. But there's like I don't know how to do it. And that's what I want to accomplish with with my course and to your point of, of not knowing necessarily what what your purpose in life is or what the product you want to it took me over two years to really figure out what the heck i'm doing and why i'm here and i've been i've had i've written out like 150,000 words across 200 something blog posts and it still it took me all of that to have an inkling of what the heck am i doing here so if, if you haven't figured it out in 90 days, uh, if it takes you another 90 for you to figure it out, you're still a year and a half ahead of me. So <laughs> I, I, I can't, I can't, uh, I can't criticize, but you know, whatever, whatever it does or whatever it takes for you to figure that out, you know, you never know exactly where your, your ideas come from. I think there was a, a Jim Rohn or Napoleon Hill, one of those guys that says, you know, try, try everything because you don't know where your next big idea is going to come from. Exactly. And I'm freaking out because I don't have my magic product that's going to make me all this money. But at the same time, I've been at this for a couple of dang months. Like I should just, I, I tell myself, I'm like, you need to chill out. You're still a newbie. You've only <laughs> been doing this a couple months. You know what I mean? Like I understand yeah. internet years is a lot different than real life, but I just need to, to chill out and it'll come to me. And the more I think like that, the more opportunities pop up. And by being involved in those opportunities, maybe that thing will give me then the spark to figure out what I really want to do in terms of like my own product or whatever. Because if you had to, to suggest, and I want to get to some of the, the questions I normally ask, because I think you're going to just crush the answers. And I, I'm really eager to hear what you have to say. Yeah. But if you had one thing, you know, I think I'm sitting at six or 7,000 downloads. I mean, you get that in about five minutes. What is one thing for all these people? Because I think a lot of people listening to this want to start a podcast or have one because we know the power of podcasting. If you did have one thing that was like, here's, here's the key that I did this one little thing and – it just really took this podcast forward. You mentioned conferences before. It, would that would that be your answer now, or can you throw us a second one if, so if it's not? So outside of just starting the dang thing, <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say the the one thing that has really helped me and continues to help me, and I'm gonna steal it from Pat Flynn, is to be everywhere, like literally be everywhere. Now, Pat Flynn, I think. Uh, which he was on your show. Great job, by the way. Um, Thank you. I think what I got out of that is he was like, you need to be on all these different platforms and conferences and all that, like, uh, so that your name pops up. And mm -hmm. yes, that's a fat portion of it. Um, but at the same time, you need to come at it from an authentic place. Don't just be everywhere for the sake of being everywhere and because you heard Pat Flynn tell you to be everywhere because what's probably going to happen is your your message or the value that you can bring to whatever that thing is, it's going to get diluted. Um, but you really need to bust your button and, and try and continuously give back to whatever that was so freely given to you. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. Um there's a, a forum I belong to, a podcasting forum that up until recently, which I still feel bad about, I was on that mother every day uh, from from sun up to sundown, replying to people, um, answering questions, giving feedback, asking questions myself. Like someone says, hey, I, you know, who does this for this? Right. Do you use this? Pro Whatever. I was always trying to be the one to just jump in there and be like, hey, here's my experience, blah, 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 blah. Like all that helps because it, 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 it gets you at like certain audiences won't find you on certain platforms. If you're on these platforms, giving value and, and providing feedback and helping and contributing, then you don't have to sell. 
You see what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to go on on all these Mm -hmm. places and say, hey, check out my new podcast episode and please listen and please rate and review and blah, 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 blah. They're already doing that for me because I, for the past month, two months, whatever, I've cared more about what they're doing, what they're up to. How could I help you organically and, and specifically podcasting, by the way, the guests. Oh my gosh, my guests. I... Yeah, you've had some big names. The head of a MGM Studios, you said. Yeah, so oh, I've had some crazy. major names. Both people that our world have never heard of, and then all of a sudden they're in love with these people. But specifically podcasting. I've I mentioned her way too much. I need to give some other guests some love, but I'm going to mention her again. Amy Schmidauer. Maybe because Amy was just at my house. I don't know what it is, but I really like what she's doing. And I'll give you an example of what I did for Amy. Not trying to get this from her, by the way. Prior to her being on my show, I promoted her stuff on my social media channels. I have her on my show. We have a great episode, right? People like it. And then after I continue to promote her stuff, she launched a podcast. And I think you mentioned you saw my post. Uh, Mm -hmm. She launched a podcast. What do I do? I blast out on all my channels. Oh, my God. Check out Amy's podcast. Go listen to it. Rate, review, subscribe, whatever what happens often is somebody will get that guest that they want on their show. They'll interview them. And just like at the craps table, the dealers, they like clap their hands and they say, okay, I'm done. I got my interview. Like you can't do that. You got to continue. Like if you had them on the show, you obviously had them on for a reason and you liked them. So keep help, help them out. Cause it always comes back in turn, by the way, Amy and I have not only become good friends since then, but she will name drop me on on her show and she's even done it on her podcast and then a result of that it's people coming to my show and i always ask hey how did you hear me oh my god i i I, amy mentioned you or amy this or amy that and it's kind of kumbaya-ish but like just help your fellow man and they'll help you and you don't have to sell as hard i I like that because so so often i I see people who are just starting out, which is good that they're starting, but they, they, they want to receive, and they haven't really given ah, anything. You got to give big time first. Yeah, exactly. And I asked something on Facebook the other day. Um, I it was a I think it was a quote from Brendan Burchard's book, uh, "The Millionaire Messenger." Chris, you have to read that if you haven't. Okay. Um. It's one of the best books for people doing like what we want to want to do. We have a message and want to share. Anyway, he, he says we're not we're not in a uh, uh, like ask and receive economy anymore. We're a give and receive economy. And I asked if people agreed with that. And there's one guy uh, who responded to it. And I th- he he's had this opinion for quite a while, and it's like this is my information. I want to charge I want to charge for it from the beginning, and I've seen that with this guy, another guy online who does the blog and podcast thing, and he he wanted people to to give to him and contribute to his site when he wasn't doing anything, and not to just call those two guys out, but you 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 have to you have to give. Or else you're going to be seen as one of the most selfish SOBs online because there's so many people like that we've come across. And I'm sure you've come across people that are just so generous with their time. Yeah. I mean, I, I spent like an hour or, or, or just more than an hour with, with Pat Flynn, whose time, if you divided his yearly income into minutes, uh, probably makes several hundred dollars a minute. I mean, how would I do that? I I've interviewed a guy who is a DECA millionaire, and he's won Emmy awards. And I spent an hour on the line with him. I've met, I spent an hour and a half with a guy that's like John Maxwell's right hand man. How else, Chris, would we be able to do that if people weren't generous with their time? And if people are just starting out, and their very first thought when they wake up in the morning is, "How can I be generous?" They're thinking the wrong thing. And there's so many people to this day that are like that. And unfortunately they will never, you know, see the other side of that coin. I've had, I'm going to be very candid and bold on your show right now. Cause usually I, 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 I am somewhat cognizant of who I want to offend or, or who I want to offend, who I don't want to offend. Uh, and I don't cuss on my show and, and all that, but I'm going to be very candid with you right now. 
I say pick a fight, Chris. That's been well, my encouragement for for people. This I'm, I'm this picking week. a fight not with someone specifically because <laughs> I still have respect for people. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna out there somebody, go. but I will say, I have had uh, someone on my show, and I'm not gonna say if it's been aired or not. Uh, I'm gonna keep it that vague because again, I want to respect this person despite what I think of them, who is the complete opposite and does not give back and was such a jerk off with me that. I kind of made that mental note and said, okay, I will never, ever help you as long as I live. Now, someone could be hearing me now and they're saying, oh, but you got to be the bigger man. Look, this is just me. I'm sorry. But the fact that I see you treat people this way and then you treated me a certain way and then you reached back out, by the way, and said, can we blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry for being vague, even though I said I was going to call. I'm going to pick a fight. Um, Just that whole thing. Like, I will never help you again. You're not going to, like, come back. I don't, I just don't care. Why? Not because I want to be a malicious dude. Is because I don't want to surround myself with people like you. I don't want to be associated with people like you. I want mm-hmm. to be with people. I, I wish I know who said that quote. You're the average or the sum of the five people you hang out with. Like, I want to live that to a T. I want to help people who want to be helped and then reciprocate that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because they believe in this meth- in this whatever, right? Well, there people have have taken what you just said be the bigger man to to the extreme. I I fully believe that, Chris. People were like, "Well, I want to be the bigger man." Don't put up with people that that bring you down. Yeah. Like you said, there you only have a limited amount of time in the day in your life. Why are you putting up with crap or some jerk that doesn't that's not going to help you out and that's all we had to say about that if if you if there's somebody in your life and you're listening to this right now that doesn't help you or doesn't have your best interest in mind screw being a bigger man this is a time i believe for you to be selfish and surround yourself with people who have your best interest at heart not some jerk who is criticizing or being unhelpful or just being a leech of your time and energy would you agree, Chris? Yeah, I mean, you can't look. Good, we're human. Good, beings. we can continue with this episode then. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> no, That's what you got to do. You, you got to cut me off, man, because I'll keep going. Well, if you didn't agree, I'd I'd have to just say, well, nice for having you. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we I'm glad we agreed on that. Well, Chris, being on the Empowered podcast, I want to talk about the word empower and and some of the the concepts around that. What does the word empower mean to you? Oh man, I you know it changes every week. Uh, in terms of feeling empowered, I, I really don't know. I'm sorry. I wish I can give you something awesome right now. But uh, I say that because I'm, I'm learning myself what I thought was being empowered. Uh, then I, I changed the definition, right? Like when you, I'll give you an example, corporate America. I'm assuming a lot of people are, your, are in corporate America that listen to your show or entrepreneurs or wannabes, right? A, a little bit of both. Yeah. I need people to give me feedback on that. Yeah. So, when you empower the people, this sounds like very political right now. <laughs> when you empower your staff, when you empower the small four person team that works for you to to do what they do best and, and basically go create whatever you ask them to create, and you empower them with the ability to make decisions. Not only in my experience, because I came from this world, not only will they come back to you with a better product and i'm using the word product loosely again it could be a report it could be a presentation whatever it is they'll come back to you with a bigger product but internally they will feel like they're a part of a team they will feel great themselves so you're being a good human being by the way and a residual organic effect of that is they will always want to be on your team then they won't be as scared to ask for advice and then they won't be as scared to to make decisions because they're going to get hit with a, a stick and not be given a carrot does that make sense it does sorry i was on me for a second my <laughs> no. my my uh phones were blowing up i just recently switched over to google hangouts and uh, for my text messages anyway big side track but i i like I like that. If you give someone a goal to achieve instead of these steps to get there, they're free to use their creativity. And um, I, I, as as entrepreneurs, part of the audience that is entrepreneurs, we want to have our hand in everything. And I, I, 
I struggle to give up control. When I first started having Ashley edit my podcast, I was probably like the the helicopter boss, like hovering. Per- in, perfect tie-in, by the way. What you're explaining yeah. right now, keep going. But I'm saying that's perfect. I gave a a, a corporate America uh, example, and you're doing into the 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 guy who's working for himself. No, really, <laughs> like keep going. It, it it does it does apply to both, but it's it comes down to control, and she's done a fantastic job, but we have to give up that control. And a lot of people who are in corporate America, I've worked for some of the largest companies in the world that I I can tell you when we're done recording, if you are at all curious, but just huge bureaucracies and system after system after system. But if you put the system aside for just a second and give someone that creativity, that's a great way to empower somebody to use their creativity, put their personality into into something, and they may come back with something that really surprises you with the quality or the ingenuity or just the uniqueness of whatever they come back with and to use your, your you know, use product loosely. Whenever they come back with that product, you know, it might be a, a new cool font or, or some additional colors that really stand out or something like that. And... If you're willing to give up a little bit of that control, I think the rewards could be pretty significant and uh, you know, might might have a cool experience. I want to skip a couple of these questions because Damn, we're you kind of answered – Well, you answered <laughs> a couple of them, them already. But when you decided to not go back to the corporate thing back in September, October, and – you know, 90 days ago, you started the podcast. You mentioned you had a wife and kids and you've got insurance and things. What kind of resistance have you faced over the last, I don't know, this is like eight or nine months in this process. What what has that process been like for you? When you say resistance, what do you mean? Capital R, like, uh, oh, what's his name? Have you have you met uh, The War of Art? What book is that? Art of War? No, The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Uh, have you heard of that? Yeah, 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 but I haven't. I'm not familiar with it. Okay, well, just what kind of pushback or obstacles have you faced over the last eight or nine months? Uh, well, from my family, uh, none really. I mean, my wife in the beginning was extremely supportive, first of all. But there was a point where she's like, I don't know what you're doing. Like, you, you need to help me understand. <laughs> she didn't say it like that, but that, that's basically what was coming off is like, you need yeah. to help me understand so that I can t- continue to support you, not just because you're my husband, but like, I fully get it. And which is my fault, by the way, because I didn't take the time to communicate with her. Look, this is how it's going to look, you know, going forward and how it's going to make money and so on and so forth. Once I did that, it it got way better. Like, she got it now. When I show her, look, I need to go down to Arizona for a Life on Fire event, you know, for a week to to do this thing. Like, she she gets it now. You know what I'm saying? So there wasn't, wasn't mm-hmm. really any resistance in terms of relationships or, or anything like that. Um, the only resistance really came from myself. I talked this big game on your show, how to go forward and do all this. <laughs> no, really. But I, I still have my own resistance every day, like, Tell like my own inner self telling me not to do this, that, or the other. Now I'm, I found a way to break through that, but uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's been smooth sailing. Yeah, I think it's It's important. A lot of work though. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I it's in it's important, and you and I, Chris, are very lucky to have that spousal support because I've talked to a lot of people who their wives, um, and it's not gender specific i've i guess i've only talked to this with with other guys but their wives don't care at all no. what they're doing online oh he's having and a fun little hobby on the internet yeah okay when are you gonna get a real job like i don't, I don't, I don't think we or, have that or it's it you know doing a podcast is their side hob, hobby or something like that and they see it as not as something that could grow to a business in the future but something that's taking away from our tv time or you know us going to do something that you know yeah and anyway so I, I think we are are very lucky in in that regard what what have you done to get over some of those mental obstacles you said you had a lot of self-doubt i talked about having some a lot of doubt about my product what are some of the tips that you have done or maybe some things that you have done to get over 
to get over that, get through that. Uh, like, I wish I had some cool, like, secret sauce tip I can give you, but really, it's just getting in a mental state and forcing myself, even if I'm, like, that uncomfortable. Now, I didn't need to, to blast music to go on your show. However, it does help me get my juices flowing. You know what I mean? Like, it, it puts me in a different mindset. It could be listening to music. It could be listening to nothing. It could be going in my closet because I have two young kids and it gets pretty loud here. It could be just sitting in silence. It could be a, a plethora of different things. But the commonality between all of them is no matter what, like, I need to do it. It's simple. Let's just say it's sending an email to someone huge. And it's like, mm -hmm. ooh, I don't want to email them because they're busy. Like, it doesn't matter what it is. I need to pretend I have a gun to my head and that my brains are literally going to be blown out if I don't do this thing because my podcast, my business, my life depends on it. Now, granted, I've taken that a little extreme, but that's what I needed to do to kind of push through whatever crap I'm going through at the time. Yeah, I just got an email back from someone who is probably really – I emailed them before we started recording, and they just emailed me back, and I'm kind of nervous to see. I always think the answer is going to be no. I'm not at all interested. I haven't looked at his email, and I'm already thinking, well, that sucks. <laughs> I'm already telling myself no before he's even said yes or no. What is – since you have started this journey in your 90 days or nine months, either way – uh, I'd say we, you and I are both kind of at the infancy stages considering how long our lifespans hopefully are. <laughs> what are what are some of the things that over the last few months to get where you are today that you have had to stop doing? What have you stopped doing? Uh, I stopped – oh, man. I, I stopped a lot actually. Uh, I, I stopped trying to be the guy that – responds to every last forum. No, you know what? To sum it up, I stopped saying yes all the time. That's what I did. Whether it be... I, I've heard that before. That's it. Yeah. That's big. Whether it be to show up somewhere or bec become part of a mastermind or speak at this thing or have someone on the show or like just I stopped saying yes. And even commenting on Facebook and like I just had to st stop saying yes because my show has been affected by it. Bar none. Mm -hmm. the day, and you're doing three three times a week, you three said? Three times a week. So a couple weeks ago, I missed a Friday. And uh -oh. yeah. <laughs> and for me, I take that as like I'm being late to a meeting. That's like a no mm -hmm. call, no show on my part. I no called, no show to my own show. And I felt so sick to my stomach. But I was that dead worn out by spreading myself thin that at the time, I just didn't care. I woke up the next morning. I felt so sick because it is not me. It's not who I am to do something like that. But yet it happened. That was the big, that was the pivotal moment in terms of learning experience uh, that I need to change the way I do things. And a, a fat chunk of that was I needed to stop saying yes to everything. It was easy <clears throat> when my show was just starting out and I had nothing but time to sit online all day. You know what I mean? It, mm -hmm. I can't, I just, I physically can't do it anymore. Take my show out of the picture. I can't do that as a husband or a father because, because their time is now being jeopardized with me. So, yeah. Yeah. Other than hitting the, uh, the craps tables, how do you unwind and relax? Oh, man. Um, what's chill time look like for chill Chris? time is completely <laughs> disconnecting from, the computer and the world and just spending it with my family. That might mean uh, a half hour, 45 minute skates three session on Xbox with my boys that could be watching a movie with my wife. It, it's just something doing things that I normally don't do. You know what I mean? And not checking yeah. my phone by the way <laughs> and not like really just total disconnect and just doing straight up family time in the house. That that's that's a perfect answer, Chris. What was the last movie you saw? Uh, Labyrinth, the old one from the eighties. That was literally the that's last one. Interesting, I guess uh, DVD or <laughs> yeah, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. That's not what I was expecting. I was expecting yeah. like like Godzilla. Yeah, no, no, no. I know we don't we don't go to movies all that often. Okay, so if you're asking in that way, 
Well, no, that that's that's a great answer. Yeah, it was Labyrinth. It was Labyrinth. Okay. I try to show my boys the original movies that I grew up with as a kid because I just don't like the crap that they have out now. Um, okay. But the movie movies is a perfect example. We saw Wolf of Wall Street and American Hustle within the same week or something like that. Uh, my wife and I, like, we may even do that sometimes the disconnect. But yeah, those, those, uh, that's my answer. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, my my final question for you, Chris, is what is one tip or piece of advice can you give somebody who is is just starting out in their entrepreneurial journey, or they're starting a podcast? Or, you know, they're one of those people who, you know, said they made big commitments at New Media Expo and haven't quite gotten everything uh, off the ground yet. What would you say to that person to help get them going? Don't worry about failing. Stop worrying if you're going to be perceived in a certain way. In fact, dare I be bold and say stop flattering yourself and get over yourself and just go out there and make it happen. The problem that a lot of people have and that I had for a very long time is I'm worried about what other people are going to think. And that prevents me from moving forward in the direction that I should be moving forward. I'll give you a perfect example. My show, (coughs) excuse me, is doing great now and I'm being known in certain circles and blah, 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 blah. But I have the ugliest artwork on iTunes. In fact, I was at dinner with John Lee Dumas in Arizona and he flat out told me to my face, you're, you're, it's whack, dude. You have the ugliest artwork. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'd hate to see what he says about. And my... I and I joke about it on my. And we even mentioned it in his episode, by the way. And I joke about it on my show all the time. However, uh, if I was more concerned with what people thought of me and my artwork in the first impression, then that would. Who knows what would have happened? I may not have ever launched the show. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Stop worrying. You're new. If people are not going to understand that, then screw them. Like you can work through all these these hiccups and things because you're new. You're not a professional yet, myself included. Yeah. I'm not a pro yet. I'm still learning. Embrace your anonymity. Yeah. Have you heard that before? Yeah, th- yeah. Because you 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 get lost. In the, you know, I'm going to use a different one better. Because I was I, I'm a big time. I love skateboarding. I went to this huge event for Zappos. Uh, what was it on Friday night? And I understand this world. I understand what these, I saw this girl. She probably tried this chick and I filmed her too. Uh, 50 something times. And in those 50 something times, she's like cracking her dome on the pavement. She's getting like (laughs) wheel bite and she'll fall and, and go head first into the ramp. Like, but she kept going and going and going and going. And that's why I want, actually, I'm getting a couple of skate, pro skaters on my show for that reason. If entrepreneurs or people wanting to do something in their life took the mentality of, look, I am fully prepared to try this trick and fall and hit my head and get the wind knocked out of me to the point where I throw up and I'm going to get back on the skateboard and do it again until I land it, like... I, I, more people need to just take things at that approach. You know what I mean? They have that drive. Completely agree. So, yeah, Chris, I know people are going to want to reach out to you and thank you for being on this show. This is one of my favorites already. It's been so fun. If I wanted to send somebody to say thank you or connect with you online, where where should I send them? Just send them to my site, saroneshow.com. Um, it doesn't matter if you're on Twitter, or Facebook, Instagram. Like If you use one platform over another, I'm on almost all of them. So if you go to saroneshow.com on the top right corner, you'll see either the contact page or any one of my social media accounts that you can reach out to me on. Awesome. Perfect. I'll put that in the show notes. And before I forget, I meant to ask you this. What is Blue Gino? So Blue Gino, uh, I wish you would ask that earlier. That's actually a long story, but just because we're wrapping up, I used to own a sexy looking blue ice cream truck. This was no, this was no <laughs> pedophile wagon. It was amazing. <laughs> and the blue is because it was like this baby blue color. It had like thick white wall wheels and moony. So anyway, and the Gino is my firstborn son's nickname. His name is Gennaro, but it's Gino. And the ice cream truck was named Gennaro's Ice Cream, so I just did Blue oh. Gino. 
that that works to that works too so gris again thank you for being on the show i had a blast and i know everybody who's listening hopefully they're they're laughing right along with me so it was awesome again. no thank you Man, I love that Chris said, stop using other people as an excuse for your own success. That's such a such a powerful statement. Don't blame your not trying. Don't blame your fear on somebody else. Own it. And if you own it, you can take it down and you can tackle it and you can come out better, faster, stronger on the other side. As I mentioned before, I did launch my course. You've heard it heard me talk about it just a couple times if you go to empoweredpodcast.com slash expertise you can sign up to be among the first to know the next time this class opens up and i will have a promo code so make sure you subscribe to the podcast and i will give you that promo code whenever it comes available thanks for tuning in this has been the empowered podcast i'm your host ellery wells we'll see you next week oh if you are in miami and you've made it this far into the podcast come check me out if you're listening to this live on wednesday the 16th of july i'll be in town for a week come find me in miami shoot me a note and i'd love to buy you a cup of coffee see you soon